it seems you either really like country music or you really hate it. The jacks may be big and tough, and truckers even stronger, but they know where when it gets to riding the cowboys stay on longer. Cowboys stay on longer. It's not kosher to like country music. The exposure of emotion is one of the things which make it too difficult to take. It's working men's blues, it's white men's blues. That's without getting too pretentious about it, but it is, it's ordinary folks from this world. Well, as far as I can tell, I was born on the A12, somewhere on the way up to Wangford, the Fish Finger Run. Uh, I don't know, it was in a lay-by or something, and, uh, and then I fetched up in a house in Wangford. I'm planning to buy it, of course, and turn it into a national shrine. Some people find it difficult to understand that I can like country music and yet have been brought up as a good socialist boy. I, mean, I was brought up in a communist background. I was brought up in a family where Joe Stalin was Uncle Joe, a nice avuncular face hanging on the wall. How can a man like this like this redneck fascist right-wing music? Given that I'm the son of a man who was widely accepted as, as an intellectual, he, he, he was the chief sub-editor of The Daily Worker, he was a historian, he wrote books. I went to university. I'm obviously an intellectual. Why don't I like opera? Why do I love this music? It's because it's emotional music and because it deals with emotions. The jukebox is playing. Honky tonk song. One more I keep saying, and then I'll go home. What good will it do me? I know what I'll find an empty bottle, broken heart. You're still on my mind. I was being a doctor to rock and roll stars in 1970. I was working on my own. And because I had long hair and people could say to me, uh, oh yeah, I had a gram of cocaine last night. Uh, I could take that and not be shocked. I could say, well, I expect that's why your nose hurts now, you know, or whatever. So I had a lot of clients who were in the rock business and a lot of visiting uh, American people from the Grateful Dead through to Graham Parsons would come and see me. Graham Parsons, around the turn of the 60s and the 70s, was single-handedly more important in turning a lot of rock and roll players and fans onto country than anybody else. He picks up my guitar, he plays this real old piece of honky-tonk, right from sort of real crying in the beer stuff, you know, the stuff that is everybody's worst fear of country music. An empty bottle, a broken heart, and you're still on my mind. So I sang this song, and it was Paul to Damascus. I saw the click, I saw the emotion, I saw the soul in country music. And I was lost. I know what I'll find. Just after meeting Graham Parsons and at the height of being sort of the doctor for the Rolling Stones and the Grateful Dead and the Who and all that and getting a bit fed up with the sycophancy of it all, I saw this ad in the Times which said, Any doctor, Saskatchewan. So I went off, got the job, went out to the wide open prairies, sat on the table of the flatlands and was a GP for four months, the only doctor for 50 miles but surrounded with country music. So every Saturday night there, I'd play with the local Ukrainian or New Norwegian country western band at a Norwegian wedding, or a Ukrainian wedding. It was great. Totally immersed. The 
first Hank Wangford band began life at the Bungie May Horse Fair. One of the big attractions of those early fairs was the Can Can Girls. A group of local women got together and did the Can Can on a little stage in the middle of the open air in the fair. The Bungie Horse Fair in 76 was one of those times, like the 60s, that if you remember, you weren't really there. It was tied in with a lot of the travelling folk as well, the gypsies and the decoys. Um, and so it was, a, it was a horse fair and it was a hippie fair. Now, two of those Can Can girls became the backing singers for the first Wangford band. They became the Handkerchiefs. Hank Wangford and the Handkerchiefs. Susie later became Susie Cruz, the Vera Lynn of the North Sea oil fields. And I remember we uh, had a very nervous rehearsal sitting in uh, somebody's wagon, just going through these songs that we'd really just learned a couple of days before. Around the time of the first horse fair, I found myself drawn back to East Anglia. And I was living at that time in a showman's wagon out on the Blytheborough marshes. When the sun slips down the hillside and the day gives in tonight, when the ghosts come out a hiding at the feeding of the light. I can hear your voices whispering low Like the wind in the dark And I can't let go You've got a, a hole on my heart Oh, I wish I'd never met you I wish I could forget you. The Wagon was a great place to write ballads. Uh, it was great in the winter because you had those terrible cold winds racing down from Siberia across the Baltic, cooling down nicely until boff! They smack you in the face as you just come out for your cup of tea in the morning. Nowadays I just visit Suffolk. Uh, being in love, I actually visit it quite a lot. But I'm based in London. And I live in Ireland quite a lot. And the rest of the time, I'm on the road. I get those wheels rolling, and I'm a happy boy. It's like a lot of people who play music, I'm restless. I feel happier moving often than I am in one place. So I think I have a kind of affinity for the travelling folks. I understand exactly what they're on about. And as soon as you start living or sleeping in a showman's wagon, where your head is right by the window and the cow parsley is just poking into your ear, then you know what I'm talking about. Let go, you got a hold on my heart. When you sing a sad song about a sad thing that has actually happened and you identify with it, you feel better for singing it afterwards. It is triumphing over it. You've got to have fun too. So there's honky-tonk songs, songs about going out on a Saturday night and having a terrific time. Everything's turned upside down But when I find a girl of mine We're really gonna paint this town Fashion note for would-be country and western car buyers, always take your Stetson when you check the car out, because the most important thing in your car is you've got to have space to wear your hat. In 
know, a hat's very important to a, a country singer, it's very important to a cowboy. Hats are it, and looking after the hats are very important. That's why we country stars do have our hat boxes, so you can carry at least three hats around with you. But the Pope's a big, uh, big hat fan too. In fact, he's, he is at heart a cowboy. Everywhere I went on the trail of the cowboys of South America, I found that when I got to a real big heartland of cowboydom, the Pope had been there. He'd already copped his entire gaucho gear, you know, the baggy trousers, the hat, the poncho, boots. I mean, he is a small man in stature. I do like to think that under the white robe, there is a pair of economy boot company cowboy boots. And it gives him a raise of a couple of inches. I think he can use all he can get. Very important with cowboy boots, you don't tuck both jean bottoms in. Not what you want to look like. So you either put both boots in the trouser, or if you're in West Texas, you have one in, one out. So you show off the shank. The other great thing about country is a fantastic sense of irony. So country music comes out with these great self-mocking lines. At least I know how to stand on my own two knees. If today was a fish, I'd throw it back in. Or a song about fooling yourself that you're not really breaking up with your woman. Walk out backwards so I'll think you're coming in. Nothing is what it seems, and when I was in the southern states I was delighted to go into a little country church and hear a dozen white people singing and they sounded exactly like Lady Smith Black Mambazo. Not exactly, because they don't have the same voices as the Zulu singers, but the harmonies they were singing were exactly the same harmonies as the harmonies that they sing down in South Africa. How can that be? Well, it just happened historically, it was an accident, that all the missionaries who went into Africa took these hymn books that had got written up in the northern parts of the states with what they called shape notes, and they did these primitive harmonies. And in some parts of the southern states, they still sing these primitive harmonies. And that's exactly what the Zulu songs were based on. I really like gospel music, which again, I suppose, is a puzzle for some people, because if they think I was brought up as a commie, then how can I love religious music? Well, it's because it's very emotional, again. I uh, have a lot of difficulty with some of the gospel preachers and from the evangelism that you get, whether it's on TV in America or whether it's just in a pulpit. And so I wrote a song called Jogging with Jesus to kind of take off the uh, more obvious absurdities of some of the TV preachers. One of the great things about country, and one of the reasons it's so universally accepted, except it seems by the English middle classes, is it's simple. It's very simple and therefore direct. It's much more difficult to write a simple song than to write a complicated song. Here I go again, slipping whiskey in my beer. For it ain't no 
hanging round her head Since you slipped away Things just ain't never been the same Leaves me foolishly getting drunk Waiting for a train Sitting on the platform of a South Alberta station While the prairie moon is hiding all the stars I do a bit of drinking And it sets me up to thinking Why you had to leave so suddenly It all was so bizarre Here I go again Slipping whiskey in my beer For it ain't no use Just hanging round the here Since you slipped away Things just ain't never been the same Leaves me foolishly Waiting drunk Waiting for a train Ooh It always puzzles me why we can like blues and champion blues and yet dislike country music because country music is, after all, only white man's blues. And the blues, of course, is you know, the noble black man and we as nice white middle-class people can champion the noble black man and think, oh, poor black man, we'll listen to his blues. But it had all the ingredients of country music, you know, over-emotional, talking about marriages breaking up, talking about the hard side of life, in fact, talking about the blues. Music is very regional, but you still see the connections because some travelling people will take it from one place and move across to the other place. Then they'll mix it up and they'll move somewhere else. And then somebody else will hear a bit and they'll take it somewhere else. So as long as people travel, music travels.
Music keeps us all healthy, happy. Music is lifeblood. It's no mistake that Hank Williams used to call his show, and I do it in tribute to him, the Health and Happiness Show. I've played in Nashville. I've played in a lot of places. I've sung in Carnegie Hall. I've played in a lot of country clubs. I've never played at the Aldborough Festival. I'd love to have done it, because I know Benjamin Britten was a big country and western fan anyway, he told me so. Uh, and so I was delighted to get the chance of actually singing in Snake Mortons. Unspoken Love is things I've tried to say Anyway My heart Lies broken Anyway I know We must Have our freedom I know We are both Spring is just another season anyway Anyway, anyway. 